here comes the Medusa that we have seen uh, only one or two times before from Hikori. Just want to quickly take a glimpse of the draft that they played with this Medusa prior to this game as we've got a lot more hero picks coming in. Uh, it was played against Fnatic and this draft was Tiny Enigma Undying Pango. So... Uh, very different type of draft than what they have in their hands right now. With the uh, the Pucks, the Abaddons, the Undyings. The Abaddon Radius is nice Brown. to have against the Batrider. It's not the Omni Knight, but it does the similar similar type of job here. Plus, he's not a support who can just die right away because his ulti will help him keep himself alive a bit longer. And Purge of Silences from his teammates. So it is a handy hero to have. But is the PL going to be strong enough Omni versus the Medusa? What do you think about this addition? Uh, I think that Hakori got outdrafted, and the only way I see them winning is if they're winning from start to finish, right? So Undying, I'm guessing, is going to be in the offlane, right? Um, you need to do really well in that lane. You need to do really well in the Medusa Abaddon lane. Oh, if you do it. not... Uh, and the Medusa doesn't get to a point that you have a butterfly. It's usually uh, Yasha, Scotty, butterfly against the PL. That's how you want to win. And you're able to just stand your ground and take down everything. You're going to be in so much trouble. So if Execration at any point starts gaining some advantage and the Medusa cannot hit that timing, the PL will just crush everyone. These heroes don't deal with illusions. You're a counter to the Undying Tombstone. The Abaddon, you don't care about him. Uh, the Diffusal taking away the mana from every single one of these heroes is a problem. You have ways of dealing with a puck it is just oh, it, it yeah. is just very tough for Hakori here so I would like something to complement with the undying that is gonna allow them to do well in the laning phase or maybe if you want to put the undying on four but I would really don't dislike the Abaddon and undying the uh the support duo it would be a disaster so just get something that's gonna help you do well in Ten the lane and hope pick. that you're gonna be uh, getting to that timing fast because if you don't the game is just over five seconds remain Execration didn't take a lot of time with their uh, reserve time either. Like, they're just blitzing through this this draft. Like, we know exactly what we want to ban against you. We've got our strat books open on what you've been playing previously, what have, has the best success, what are the most annoying counters through to our lineup. And uh, Hakori, they're, they're the guys with their, uh, their backs against the wall. So this last pick also has to have significant importance. And as they're indicating on the side of Execration, it has to be somewhere between three and four. Because it does look like Puck is going mid. But is this Pango going to be played as a support or an off lane? We see if they have any Pango games here. I only see Analog's Pango with two games, two wins. Outside of that, pick. nobody else has played it. So would there be any chance Five to put the puck somewhere running. else? I don't think they can. Mm, I don't know. Uh, the only thing that comes to mind is a position four puck. I would really dislike a position three puck. Um, so I'm I'm not sure about this. The only thing I don't want to see from Hakori is the support duo of the Undying Abaddon. These heroes won't be doing anything in this game, especially against the PL, because against that hero, you don't do nothing. Abaddon, he can be here and there, removing lasso silences and stuff, but Undying will will just be food. So I, I don't know what Hakori are thinking with this, but I'm I'm not a fan of their draft. I guess yeah, Spango yeah. does allow you to f to fight early on, and if the Medusa hits her timing, it's going to be really good to complement her. But the thing is, again, you start falling behind, you cannot get kills. Where's the damage? I don't see it. Pango, Puck, Undying, Abaddon. How do these heroes ever kill a hero? I think Execration just need to yeah. be patient in this game. Don't give away a lot of kills, and then once the time comes with your sprint, you're going to get a couple around the map and it's just going to be impossible for Corey to play. I think I, I with this Pango pick, if this is the Orker's hero pick that he wanted, I think Execration got under his skin because, you know, we, when we saw that last Maybe. game with Nyx Assassin, he didn't really get to play the game he wanted to and he felt like he was being targeted all the time, hence why he went for the A on this because, like, maybe I get a chance to fight a bit longer with this. So I think Pango with his ulti, there's uh, only the lasso, and also the lasso's not too great against the Rolling Thunder Pango anyway. This is probably a bit of a uh, in-the-moment pick for them. So it does look like Theoliker will be playing the uh, for the Pango, and Vitaly with the Undying, most likely, unless they're doing something very interesting here with the Pango going three 
and swap in the Undying to 5. That would be in 4 Abaddon, or 3 Abaddon even, for Vitaly. So let's see what they want to do here, because the last pick from Execration is going to be a very interesting last pick of the draft. It's a Primal Beast for Tino. And as we see it, Vitaly for the Pango in the offlane, and a 4 Undying for Theoliker. So uh, they are swapping things around as they see this Primal Beast come out into the offlane. Yeah, so they will send Bob to the mid lane. I have to say I expected Execration to maybe pick something like a uh, Night Stalker or a Dragonite in the mid lane. Just make sure that the puck has a bad time. And with that, you just make a quarry... Hikori's game impossible. I think now, with Puck being against the bat, you actually have a chance of this Puck getting uh, getting strong and then going around the lanes making sure that the uh, uh, that Hikori are having a good time. But it is going to be a 4 Undying and a 5 Abaddon. And I have to say, I'm heavily favoring Execration in this one. The way I see Hikori winning, as I already mentioned, is if they do well from start to finish, but you start falling behind, you have no chance of getting kills, you have no chance of killing a single hero, and the mobility of Execration, I'd say they even have an advantage there, so it's it's not looking good for Hokori, if you ask me. Definitely going to be a very difficult game for them to overcome, but they have to find success, and it has to start early on. This is where Execration's draft has also got its strengths into the laning stage, and the exit from the laning stage is where they have a lot of power to respond against Hokori. But Akori needs to win the early game. It, it, I think I think that is the most important thing that they can do right now is win the laning stage, get Medusa a decent well, start for the game to, to have it, some we? security for their 30-minute timing, plus 30-minute timing on this Medusa. Yep. If they don't get there, if Puck cannot carry the game under 20 minutes with this lineup, I don't think Akori will stand a chance. But they've shown perseverance, they've shown integrity and grit, and those are the most important perks that you need in a tournament like this on its final day. A very important thing about Execration is they have a billion X factors. You know, even if you would start losing, you have the lasso pullback, you have the uh, Earth Spirit kickback. You know, now it has been changed so a little bit easier to do. Uh, you have the Primal Beast just being mobile, getting into the backline, getting a hero kill. You have so many ways to play. You have pickoff potential with the Shadow Shaman as well. On the other side, Hakori, they don't have those X factors. They don't have that outplay potential other than analog and against the uh, Earth Spirit, Shadow Shaman. It's just not easy to do so. Well, uh, I guess patience is a virtue here for Theoliker. He scouted out the ward. Yep. Uh, he stood under that tower for almost 50 seconds, and now when the ward gets placed down, they have information about this ops ward placed down. But also Execration know about it, so I'll be surprised if they don't actually deny it. See if they want to keep it. Keep that extra economy. Hakori with the 3 to 1. Seen it happen very often for them that they're able to get the three bounties to kick the game on a start. I really want to see how Shanks is going to be playing Dear Spirit. I haven't played this hero ever since the patch. Uh, there were changes to how the kick works. Now you don't have to turn. Uh, don't, you don't have to turn or, or, you know, go get behind the hero to kick him back. You can just click it. But there were some bugs with you kicking the hero over the stone remnant or the stone remnant needed to be close. I'm hoping that it got fixed because for someone that has played Earth Spirit for like, you know, you played for six years, seven years one way and then suddenly it changes. It can it can make you make a lot of mistakes. So I just want to see how it works. But I think it was patched out. Yeah. These are uh, the constant changes of a game still in beta, right? Yep. But still the best game in the world. Still the best game in the world. That is for sure. That's why we love Dota. Because it's never the same. It continues to change. With every patch, a different meta starts to build. And now with the uh, the looming TI under everybody's eyes and in everybody's thoughts right now. Do remember to watch the Last Chance Qualifier. Kicks off tomorrow. Very early on in the morning, depending where you're from. Uh, at least European viewers. It's going to be uh, time to start shifting your sleep schedules. For America, that's 12 hours difference to the start time. So uh, that's also going to mean... Uh, NA and SA fans are going to be waking up very early to watch some, some early game Dota. Yolikor is doing a really good job here. 
going for Tino. He's not laning against the Bat, the uh, Primal Beast, until you get level 2 in Trample. I think this Undying is going to be fine. So, uh, Theolicor, he's just trying to use this timing to just be as annoying as possible to Tino and Shanks. He does get the pull, but he pulls it into a pretty uh, awkward position right now because this wave is still pushing in favor of Execration towards their tower. So they're happy with this current situation. And Vitaly calls for a pause. There's a, bit of ba a little bit of a battle going on right now. PL is currently charging in onto the, Pia, uh, onto the Pango. <laughs> Swashbuckle is ready. Yeah, just going to take a nasty poke here in the next right click. Once again, yep. video so far, so good for Hikori, though. Um, they are winning all the lanes in terms of CS. This is something that needs to continue. They definitely have the heroes to do so. Just uh, have to be... I, I kind of feel like Execration are just trying to be patient. They don't want to make any mistakes, and understandably so. That is what would lose them the game. Yep. Patience is virtue. Like the good old saying goes, Abang. Gonna be targeted by Vitaly and Gardic. Couple hits flying in. Bit of skirmishing here and there. Just basic spell trading. Abaddon is very low on resources though, so I wouldn't be too surprised if Gardic just decides to run to the tier 2 tower. But he is pumping himself up with more mangoes, wants to have more lane presence versus Vitaly. And a dire scan will be used as Shanks has been located inside the jungle he's put down an ops ward at the outpost so he wants to keep an eye open on medusa stacks Yolikar gonna get rolled on gets the kick there's the trample from tino and tino takes a lot of damage from the incoming mystic snake and lumiere almost finds a kill the Yolikar does drop very low on hp five seconds for roll shanks does he find himself an angle to jump on the undying doesn't feel like he will necessarily go for a blind roll in and that salve will be used up Radiant have fortified their towers. Dragging himself away, you know? but even on the bot lane, Bob, uh, mid lane, sorry, Bob is diving analog and burning this puck, but puck does get the illusory orb with his last mana. Has 17 stick charges though, but has to be careful. Bob still at going for the attempt here. Doesn't take tower aggro. I sometimes do not understand how this tower aggro works because he's right clicking the hero, but he's not getting aggro. And sometimes you can dive and right click somebody and still not get a single hit. Uh, after you remove the aggro first time, there is no aggroing for a couple of seconds. I can't remember exactly how long is it. Let's make it two seconds. But when you remove aggro for the next two seconds, the tower will not attack you, even yeah. though you, even if you're attacking the heroes. So that's, that, that's how it should work in theory, right? Sometimes it's like, wait, what? This guy's not taking a single hit at any moment. You know, timing it perfectly between tower hits to swap the aggro off, and it just feels like is this broken or something? But, uh, but yeah, it is it is a skill to master, for sure. Bob is knowing exactly when to poke and when to not poke. Uh, very good that he, uh, he did come back into that lane, considering that their side lanes aren't doing well. And you can you don't even have to look at the last hits. As soon as you see that the two supports are just focusing so much on getting those bounties, you know that the lane isn't going well. So they're just trying to get some scraps of gold around the map. And all three of the cores of Akori are uh, topping the CS chart. Gardic was trying to TP mid, but he's a bit too late for it because Bob will be able to get the first blood onto Analog. They're turning their attentions towards the Shaman, but he's also very healthy on HP right now. And Abang does not have any threat in the world. So Bob succeeds in the second dive under the tower to get the kill on the park. Is Analog afraid of Bob or something? Cause, uh, or is he trying to show that he's not afraid? Because this is the second game in a row that you're, uh, you're dying. It just shouldn't happen. Yeah. Bottom lane. There's a bit of threat definitely under it. Palos will be snapped in half by Gardic with Vitaly following it up as well with the, uh, looks like the shield pop will take the kill. Meanwhile, Shanks does find a kill onto Theolica in the top lane. You know, pretty low, uh, low on HP, so Lumiere was able to get a bit of trading hits back on both of these heroes. They're very, very low. Both Shanks and Tino. Tino has to charge away, allowing Lumiere to take control of the lane. So even if they get the kill on the Undying, Primal Beast has barely anything in his arms right now. But look at this, they're on to Manalog again, and he doesn't even get the chance to phase shift or orb away. And that's kill number two for Bob. So they're recovering this mid lane, and it's actually better than recovered at this point. What have we here? 
This is the thing I was talking about. You always have the X factor in on the side of execration. You're starting to lose the lanes, but you can create plays anywhere on the map. And here, execration they find in the mid lane again. And also the call gets used, so that means execration. In the next few minutes, they can even dive somewhere else if they uh, if they feel they need to do so because there's not going to be a call ready on the puck. Yep, and Puck has to uh, warp himself towards the mid lane using orbs. He's not going to wait for the teleport to come back off cooldown just in case if he <laughs> if he happens to die again, for example, then he would actually have the TP available to go back into the lane. But everybody is showing on the map. Arbang is playing very aggressive here with this Shaman. This Shaman does have a lot of durability. I'm kind of surprised about that as well. And maybe get a kill on Vitaly. Shackles are here, but the shield comes out. And Arbang is going to be hunted inside the trees. But Vitaly takes a lot of damage from Palos. Turnaround with a shield crash from Vitaly. Still continues to pummel away. And there we go with the kill. Gardic very low on HP. And Palos will secure it. One for one. He wants more. Able to get this one? I don't think he can kill Vitaly anymore. I'm just looking at this mid situation where Bob was about to go under the tower, but Lumiere is being hunted. The bigger target's been found, but go, piggy, go. Squealing to safety. Um, we'll be uh, we'll be fine. That ward, the, sh the Shanks played. Oh, Vitaly's dead. Plays. Oh, he's gone. He's so dead. Don't believe it. He wasn't suspecting that to happen. Uh, last game, it was a quarry that were patient in the laning phase. Now, execration, they just waited for their chances. And, you know, fairly soon, the Earth Spirit could be rotating to the bot lane and getting even more kills. But he's See, dead if he, if, he, if he dies first. Well, once he respawns, he's able to move around again. And Bob along for the recovering kill. Oh, Bob's actually rotating. Yeah, he's got the Invis rune. Firefly and Lasso available, right on top of Lumiere, here goes the Firefly, the dive comes in, he's got the ulti though, but is the Glare gonna do anything? It doesn't seem like it, there is nothing this Medusa can do to survive. Low on mana, mana shield doesn't really help at that point, just melts. Uh, they both don't look at her. The uh, the bat rider obviously can pull her with the lasso, but uh, it looked like Tino was trampling her with the back legs rather than the uh, than the front ones here on the primal beast. So yep. in the end, the the ulti doesn't really do anything. That is a nice set of kills going in the way of execration. Getting this up lane. to six now. The Oliker, he has to pop the tombstone. He's got no heal. He's got raindrops, but raindrops ain't really gonna keep him alive either. He goes down, but so does Palos. Analog and Vitaly using both of their ulties to secure the Phantom Lancer kill. So they're getting Primal Beast back into the game, but they're also losing their carry on the other side of the map. I don't know if this is good or not, because it, for me, it looks like it's much better for Hakori, even if they're losing their heroes in the top lane. Iron at the mid lane at a very, very fast pace to execration. Hakori just seems to find the better trades. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And the thing is that the PL is going for a defusal blade. So Palos, with that item, you'd much rather fight if you can. It's not a farming item. You don't farm at all with it. So if you are not ahead, and he definitely isn't in this game, that item is going to be more of a liability. Did he change his build? No, he's still going to be going for the defusal. Uh, going to be a tough one for uh, for Palos. He will need a lot of time, and yeah. it might give enough for Lumiere to be strong. And the worst part about building the Fusel is you need a plus one item on top of it to actually work. Uh, which is usually either Yasha or straight up Manta style to actually have an impact. You're too soft, you're too weak on this hero, you have less than a thousand HP. So with just a defusal yeah. blade, you can do good early damage, but the moment they spot you, like especially a hero like Puck, or even in this case the Pango with Rolling Thunder gets somewhere near, you're, you're dead. Like You, uh, you get nothing out of your defusal blade true so the ideal scenario would be if he comes towards the tail end of the fight and uh, kind of cleans up they might still get him he's right on next to the stairs and he's gonna get a connection here vitaly with the second one they pop the tombstone oh he doesn't get it but he's got swashbuckle and shield crash nice roll from shanks to buy time for tino to escape and vitaly misses both of his abilities on tino I and now him. comes abeg here they got a perfect chance to turn this around the wards are placed down they've got gardic popping his ulti trying to keep the pango alive with some extra heals shields on cooldown no mana left and he's down shanks will fall as well but tino lives and bob is here to 
secure at least one more for Tino. So the Primal Beast lives and gets two kills with it. They might lose some HP on the mid tower, but a beautiful turnaround and good dodging from Execration. People still aren't used to just how tanky this hero is. Analog? Did he die for this tower? Uh, no. I think he's gonna kill the Batrider. If Sticks anything. Oh. Nice dodge yeah. of the flame. Ooh, that is so playing on the edge. He's not fearing Bob. I think I think he's trying to make some kind of, uh, you know, he's, try he's trying to taunt him a bit. Maybe. That's how I see it. Bob is playing so well, though, that uh, I'm not sure that he's the right player to taunt. I think Bob feels like he's uh, on top of the world right now in this yeah. tournament, the way that he has been playing. Yeah, definitely. Bob going all the way back to base. Let's take a look at uh, the carry situation. So, on Lumiere, we have a Manta style in the works from Power Treads. No Dragon Lance built in between, so straight up Manta. He's already got the Yasha, so the farming speed is already improved. 94 last hits, then we have the 60 last hits Palos, who does have a Diffusal Blade going for the Manta style. So he will want to continue our farming for that. The difference between these two carries is a thousand gold. It's a big difference uh, for the uh, for the current part of the game and a beautiful scan, beautiful scan. They know exactly what's going on. Yeah, the scan is better than the smoke itself, so... Uh, Maybe Gardic is the one to pop them. He, he can at least run away if they initiate. They've got the vision. They see Shanks here. Analog might get baited into seeing a lonely hero. There's another one, but the is going to be here as well. They are stacking surround in the Earth Spirit. Silence is about to run out. Ah, bang, Bob. Everyone coming in. Analog going to get the kill. Can he get out of there, though? He can. So Gardic and Theolicor might be the ones to really pop, but here comes Lumiere. Look at the Medusa charging into battle. And Lumiere for a kill on Abang, chasing Tino. Vitaly cannot quite catch him. He's not got the movement speed required for it. And this entire zombie army is chasing two targets, but they're literally just chasing. They're not getting to their their final destination. It looked really scary for Kokori there for a it moment, did. but the tombstone did save, save them the fight. That turnaround for Execration was so big, but in the end, not enough. If, if the tombstone wasn't there in such a good position and he died, the chase might have been the other way around. Execration getting a few more kills and Kokori being the ones on the run. Really good uh, in the moment decision plays here from both sides of these teams. So this is what yep. you expect from this, from this lower bracket finals as well, to really show the best that they can in a high stakes moment like it is a 40k tournament but you're still playing for a victorious tournament and people are gonna notice if you're having success in tournaments like these they look at these players Hokori's already playing in ti execration still looking for an entry there abang the stand-in player he's gonna get burnt down by the witchblade ticks and there's a dd in puck's bottle i'd say this kind of a pace definitely favors Hokori because there's not uh, a lot of things happening around the map constantly. Yep. So Execration, they cannot constantly fight. They're not getting kills and they're even bleeding a few of them a few times. Well, they're running into Lumiere here. He's gonna get a decent amount of damage out. Gardic with the save. The bubble's there for the Undying. Canceling the ulti and another gaze. They force them away, but they cannot get any kills. The but, is coming. But as mentioned, as mentioned, if this early game goes into the favor of Hokori, they have a game to play. Yep. And it's going to be tough for Execration to play if, if Hakori are ahead because the Medusa just stands in front and it's going to be very hard to uh, to catch her. But the thing is, Execration, they always have a play in this game. Mm. There is always a chance for them to reposition the enemy, kick them back, pull them back, kill them from under to zero, catch the puck on the split push and thus uh, get themselves into an advantage. So I don't think Execration are scared whatsoever, but the game isn't going perfectly for them by any means. That's true. Didi has popped on analog and he's pumping himself with as much mana as possible. Abang, I think they've scout. Actually, they did not see him go into the fog, but they saw him reappear and they're going to jump him. Hex comes out. There's a charge from Tino and there's the trample damage. Pango taking a lot. His swashbuckle got cancelled by the instant ulti from Tino, but the coil's going to be there as well. But the damage coming in right away. And they also got Palos in the middle of all of this. And they will take down Shanks. That's going to be the first one. Tino about to probably got the last one coming in as well. And Batrider can't do anything because it's purged away by Gardic and Okoria full control. And they're going to lose Bob in this fight as well. But there's damage coming in 
and they will try to respond onto Hakori. Palos on the run, Vitaly to take him down, and here we see why the PL is so soft in these fights with just the defusal. You do hit hard, but the opponents just simply hit harder, and that is a costly fight for Execration, four for one. Gardic just absolutely decimated them in that fight. Absolutely decimated. He removed everything. He stopped the ulti from the uh, Primal Beast. He stopped the lasso immediately. Yep. And Execration just getting ahead of themselves. Now it's a 3k gold difference. And Lumiere is farming. Just which like means that. Scotty, Butterfly, they're going to be coming out at, at a perfect timing if Execration doesn't change something. And I think they have to change the approach to the game. You cannot go for straight up fights. You need to spread the map around and then catch people. Because in like with two heroes, Hikori, they can't get kills. But if it's a big team fight with a tombstone with constant spell spamming, they will clean up at some point. Yeah, and Palos is falling behind because of that last kill again. Now it's a 2,000 gold difference. It used to be 1k, now it's 2k. And it's going to continue increasing if they cannot uh, slow down the Medusa in any way. And most importantly, keep the PL alive. It's a lot of illusions onto this tower. Looks like they're just gonna give this tier one uh, for free by the looks of it. Pa Bob will find a kill with Shanks onto Vitaly. He will get to get his uh, BKB on time here with this uh, with this kill for the bat. That's big. Uh, Execration need to get those pickoffs rolling. This is what their lineup is good at. A bank wants to go for uh, for the Etherlands. I would argue Blink Dagger first would have been a bit of a better choice. Uh, if Execration want to continue playing like they did, like fighting and those kind of skirmishes, then yeah, Etherlands is better. But I just don't think that that's the best way for them to approach playing this lineup. I want to see I want to see more big plays from Bob like I I love watching this guy play loving I mean I was hyping up execration uh, the the day before now, I think I've been hyping execration a lot this tournament and that, this one comes in pretty freely Vitaly they just killed him before they're gonna kill him again that one doesn't require any flashy plays it just charges in on a teleporting pango and takes him it's a good time for a smoke now from Execration because Abaddon TP to the top lane. He's not in a good position to assist his team. If you smoke and go mid, it's going to be great. Palos. He's not going to get away with this one. It's just not good for Execration. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, that's so bad. That, that is really bad. Like You cannot get caught in the river as a peel against the puck lineup. Like, this is just not the place to be. That hurts. That really hurts. Uh, he, he's gonna have to go, I think, for the shard build here for the PL. It's not looking good currently for Palos, and because it's not looking good for him, it's not looking good for the entirety of Execration, because Lumiere is getting closer and closer to the Skardi. That's the first timing. PL cannot fight him, but when the Butterfly comes, you just walk into the Roche Pit, and with the Aegis, you end the game. So Execration, they need more of these moves when they're just destroying the side lanes, but all of it kind of falls flat if, if Palos continues to die. Hopping. He's going to be scouting out in mid for a time being, but the Shadow Shaman doesn't really get to do much currently. Maybe with the help of Tino and Shanks, they can pull off some good moves, you know? I mean, they have been grabbing Vitaly in the top lane. Again, Bob was hunting. I was like, I've got my lasso soon up on cooldown. You want to wait just a half a minute longer and show up again? Good thing for Hakori is that even when they lost to Vitaly twice, there is no follow-up. Execration didn't get anything more, and they needed to Palos. Is he dead again? He has a Manta now. Yep, and he shows himself in mid, and Tino going to be walking, and the Rolling Thunder comes out, but the blink from Vitaly, the sun's going to be there, and Palos again. This PL just constantly getting bullied this game. That's a fifth death for the Phantom Lancer. And he's just not going anywhere in net worth. Now it's 3,000 difference to Lumiere. Oh, boy. I mean, this is really playing into the pockets of a Medusa, man. It's playing amazingly towards the pockets of the Medusa. Lumiere, he couldn't be happier. He's looking at this game right now, and he's thinking this PL is not going to be a problem for me until, like, minute 50, and I'm not going to allow the game to get to that point. Surprisingly, in the, the drafting stage, where it kind of looked like Execration might have a bit of better control in general. 
this game is now pretty Pokori favored, but this is a good fight that they can take as long as Bob survives with the BKB. Tino controlling the puck, the lasso is there. Gardic's not gonna be close enough for the He's save. He alive. does not get the shield in time, or does he? Puck able to run away, and Shex with the roll in. Is it enough? Yes, it is. They finally close him out, and that's a big kill to take. Palos almost dies as Lumiere is focusing him down. But that's a massive kill for Execration. A very, very needed kill. But now they mustn't lose any other member of their team. Primal Beast able to charge away and the supports also able to walk out from the fight. That could have been disastrous for Execration. There was a regen rune on the puck. He got out, but a beautiful roll from Shanks. That roll saved them the game. You lose the fight there. The puck continues chasing and he'll destroy everyone. Palos? Okay, Vitaly got ahead of himself. He can't get the kill. Yeah, and he's trying to uh, get out as well. Bob has no TP cancel available. They're giving, they're making Palos, you know, fear for his life again. Mid lane? Yeah, though. Tino is playing very aggressive care. with his positioning here. You know, he's getting a bit of poke out. Lumiere can't kill him. It is, it is still looking scary for Execration, but it, they're showing that they have ways to play this game. No matter what the situation is, you can do it. Okori, though, they're going to start itemizing properly and using this advantage to uh, to get ahead. The Lotus Orb coming out from the Pango. It's going to come out right now. The Lincoln Seer on the puck will make it that much harder for Execration to get the right jumps. And, of course, Abaddon there will will then have a much easier time. Again, Gardic is going for a Lotus. I still think some kind of a mobility item might be better, but in this game in particular, if the Medusa is just in front and no one else is showing, the Lotus Orb will be good enough. 14-14 with a 4k lead for Hikori as we're gonna sit on a tiny pause. Got a tiny bit of a breather here. There's been a lot of action. Execration has had to either answer or cause against Hikori. But Hikori are in the driver's seat for sure. This has been a uh, very convincing start for them. Laning stage was still pretty 50-50, but... Palos' couple deaths has really pushed their carry back. He has finished his Manta. But the thing is, Medusa's already had Manta and he's already built up a Scotty in between. This is a 5,000 difference now. There's a full item difference between the carries. They got a lasso in the river. Uh, the Shackles, sorry, not the lasso. They still... Don't have it. You, yeah, he's still on cooldown for a couple oh. seconds. Aben getting killed in the river at that time. And the rest of Execration on the retreat. Hikori taking over the triangle and thinking Roshan. When you see a Medusa lineup just going 22 minutes in into the enemy triangle, just walking there without any issue, especially if they're the dire side and just completely controlling it with Rosh, you know that uh, the other team is in trouble because that part of the map should be at least the one that Execration can uh, can protect. The thing is their lineup is good at pickoffs, their lineup is good at mobility, and they're just unable to push out the waves enough so that they can make those happen. Just a couple of kills on Vitaly, that's it. That's the only thing they accomplished. There's a Wraith Pact coming up on the Earth Spirit that will slow down the Medusa a little bit. But it's still not going to make a, a massive difference because this Medusa is still going to do a lot of damage, nevertheless. And the multi shot. Scotty is a nuisance to deal with and going for the butterfly, like you said. Maybe a lot of, lot of trouble ahead. Straight to the tier 2 tower they go. There is a creep wave cutter. Tino analog has found him. There's a BKB available on the primal beast, and analog uses the coil already. And Tino fights back, but how much damage does he have? He trades a couple hits with him. They're finishing off the bottom tier one tower, maybe getting a kill onto the other one. Analog, Tino, Tino, did he extend too far? Yes, he did. That's the kill for analog. He did not that even have so a TP bad. anymore. Like, he, I think he had a cooldown on it or something, but he just stayed to fight. And then when he wants to TP away with the uproar, eh, it's not it's not looking good enough at more at that point. He could have ran out at any point there with the uh, with the onslaught, but he decided to maybe try to kill the puck. Then also the Lincolns was there, so no chance to, uh, to use the pulverize at that point. Yeah. It was a little bit too late when he realized there is nothing that he could do. 
Arbeng is right behind enemy lines here. Theolica is very near him. And Analog on the other side. Hex comes out, though. They have to damage. Oh, he just hexes the TP away. He will. Knowing there's no coil. Execration are making a very, uh, very aggressive plays. They have to. They have to do it. You have to force Hakori to use their TPs because if they're just running from one lane to another in an aggressive manner, you cannot fight them currently and you cannot kill them if they're together. But if you force out some TPs, then you can use a good smoke and actually use your lineup. Uh, if that doesn't happen, then you have one move and that is uh, play the high ground, pull people back with the lasso or the kickback, and that's where you, uh, where you get a fight going. But it is not a smart approach to the game, especially because Kokori, they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be moving towards the high ground right now. See what they can do here. Is this gonna be the force back for Execration to defend the base? The air already starting off with the tier three tower. They have a catapult with them. They make things even harder. Lotus Orb to protect them, and Abaddon at the back as well for the shield. They are making a bit of a crescent-shaped defense on the back line. This tier 3 is about to fall. Vitaly is also waiting for the call. When do I go in? When do you need me to go? Green track's already fallen. And then the big question is, do they stay for the melee? Looks like they have, they're in no hurry. They're swapping Lincolnsons and Lotuses on top of the Medusa. And here goes Shanks. There's the initiation. Kick back. It will kick Shanks back as well. Tino with the charge. They get the gaze off. But it's not going to stun anybody else except for the Shaman and the Primal Beast. So even if they don't get the Batrider in it, they're fine with it. They don't worry. Palos is trying to fight for his life. They will take down Theoliker. They're looking for Gardic. Gardic's ulti will pop. Medusa getting hexed up inside the wards. Abeng die back. And that is going to be Vitaly falling as well. Maybe they can get this kill onto the Pango. Very low in HP. Analog's going to be here as well with a coil. And Palos will secure it with Bob for another kill. But the PL to drop next triple for Lumiere and the melee racks to fall and this is just one of those games where you look at PL pretty strong against the Medusa but in this game Medusa is just so far ahead there's a 7k difference between these two a lane of racks taken and Hakori they are not gonna let this drop they won't drop the ball but they can the matchup just sometimes works both ways. If the Medusa yeah. is allowed to get this far ahead, the PL is not an issue All for her whatsoever. Timing. All about the time. Yeah. I think Execration, they're, they're starting to lose hope right now. I'm starting to lose hope for them as well because they did everything that their lineup can do. They kicked back the Medusa. They got her close to the tier 4. So, okay, understandably so. It wasn't the mid lane that was being pushed. So you can't get her super deep. Yeah. But everything done and you get one kill whereas you don't even take the Aegis from the Medusa. I don't think she even got to uh, to zero mana at that fight so Lumiere just way too powerful right now. Now with the Daedalus he kills everyone who comes close to him. Yeah and the difficult part of that fight was because the Gaze was able to go off despite the kick. Bob is getting pummeled with his BKB on and Shanks will buy some time. Arbeng with the Hex doesn't do anything. Lumiere just right clicks him down and on to the next building they go. But yeah, basically, I mean, it could have been a little bit different of a fight if they didn't actually get the stone gaze off. I mean, uh, a three-second stun with bonus physical damage flying in with decent amount of right-click on the side of Hakori. But they had no silence for him. They had no silence for him at that point, so he did get it off. But now, second lane of racks, and because there's no tier 2 in the top lane, this could also mean a potential Mega Creeps push is on its way. Palos has a Scotty, but he cannot attack the Medusa. Just the butterfly is too big of an issue right now, and Palos doesn't even have a shard to constantly spam out the illusions. We're seeing that he wants it, but he can't even kill the uh, the Medusa illusion at this point. Yeah, the Medusa illusions are beating the PL illusions. Yeah, there's the lasso. Lotus up to follow it up. The coils beautifully set up as well. They're all stacked up. They're all clumped up. Execration. They have a masquerade that they're digging for themselves. As a Corey, take three and secure the mid lane for themselves. And this is gonna be Tino down as well for the fourth kill. The voice line spam, it kicks in. Hakori feeling themselves right now. They know that they're tying up the series and heading over to the map three in this lower bracket finals. And now towards the top lane. Execration, they have no more tools left. Ah, uh, this is, this is, feels so good for Kakori. You have one path to victory. 
you know which one it is. Execration knows which one it is, and they don't manage to do anything about it. Of course, you know, you can always argue Execration could have uh, could have done a lot of things better in this game, but the thing is, you're not allowed to make too many mistakes. You always have options, but if you make mistakes like the fight around the Roshbit, it's gonna be very, very hard, and Palos dying so many times, he's just not a uh, not an issue for Hikori. As I mentioned, this PL is not gonna be a problem for the Medusa until like minute 50, and uh, does anyone think that minute 50 is coming in this game? I, uh, I highly doubt it. That's quite far away. That is quite far away if you're looking at the clock. As we're only at the half mid half an hour marker with a 20,000 gold lead. And this game has been 100% already for a couple minutes for Hikori. I usually ask chat if there are 1%ers, but uh, I guess nobody wants to be a part of the 0% club. I'm not even going to ask that question. But uh, anything can happen in Dota, but right now it's just, it, it is it is pretty much an impossible situation for Execration. I I don't see them winning this game currently. They've, they've tried everything, right? After, after those few fights, they've tried what they could. They, they tried to split up Hikori, Hikori didn't bite. They tried to kick back the Medusa, pull her back into the tier fours. It didn't yeah. work. Right now you have to dodge Lumiere, you can't kill him. And there's just so many links. And Vitaly's gonna get the one hex dump right away. Abeng hexes himself as well. They've got the tombstone placed down to the ground as well. Palos in the front line. The PL getting targeted and PL just getting nuked down. The stuns are there. They got everything they need. Palos dead. Shanks to follow. You've got no more damage. And that's GG. Hakori to tie the series up. And we're going to the final map of the series to decide who goes to the grand finals. Hokori really loved these lineups when you want to stand and play around one hero. In the last game, it was the Veto, and they could never get him ahead. They could never get to play around him. He's always on his side of the map. Medusa is a bit different because she tends to do that a little bit later into the game, but when the timing hits, it's a problem. But she hit the timing so strong that Execration, they were completely helpless. Like, completely yep. helpless. When Lumiere came with the butterfly, when he came with the timing that we said it's it's gonna be the only way that Hikori win the game, Execration just couldn't do anything. And that is, uh, that is what Hikori were gunning for. They executed perfectly. Execration made a few slight mistakes, and they were punished for it. So, uh... Nicely done from Hikori. I'm, I'm yeah. actually surprised it looks so easy. Yeah, I mean, I did I did kind of play out the win condition for them, that if they win the, learning, the, the early game and the laning stage in a decent way and get the follow-up out of there, this will be a game for Hikori, but it, I wasn't expecting it to be this one-sided. Uh, yeah. That execration just falls flat too early into the game. Like, you know you've got a PL that can do a lot of work against Medusa. Very good in the late game, very good in the mid-game, if they're tied in net worth. But th were they ever tied in net worth? No. Uh, that uh, is... In first five minutes? <laughs> they were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was... Yeah, maybe, maybe at the very yeah. start of the game, but uh, they lost control of it way way too early into this. one. So uh, that, I mean, I hate, hate to say it, but uh, Execration was not on their level in the second game. However, uh, there is going to be a definitely a third game still up in this series, and that's going to be the decider between these two teams who gets to go to the grand finals. So until we find out what happens in the draft and the game, we're going to take a commercial break and uh, get yourself some refreshments as we return in a couple of minutes.